Hello everyone, it's Dan from Flight Insight. We're going to look at VOR holds in this video. It's one of the tougher things on your instrument checkride and it's probably because we don't get a chance to practice it that often anymore. So we're going to look at it on the whiteboard to understand what's going on and then we're going to jump in the simulator and actually fly it. We're going to do a really basic VOR hold. This is the approach plate for the VOR Runway 34 approach at Carroll County in Maryland. And if we take a look here, this is actually a hold in lieu of procedure turn, but we're going to treat it the same way as we would just a run of the mill holding procedure. And it's flown the same way anyway. So this is what we're looking at. And it's built around the Westminster VOR. Let's reconstruct this VOR hold step by step by step. We'll start with the VOR station itself, that hexagon symbol, and let's build off of that. So let's get the chart just uh, down there to the left out of the way for now and just focus on that VOR station. Now, every single VOR station has a number of radials, 360 radials that are radiating out from the station itself. This VOR hold is built off of the 178 radial. So that's the line that's going 178 degrees magnetic from the VOR station. So we'll have that plotted out. Now the inbound course goes into the station along that radial. So it looks just like this. Now when you fly it, you're not going to be flying a 178 heading. You're going to be flying the reciprocal of that, the 358 degree heading. Doesn't mean you're on the 358 radial though, right? You're flying inbound 358, but you're on that 178 radial. Radi radials radiate out from the station. Now once we overfly the station, we're going to be making an outbound turn. 180 degree turn will be a beam the station. And it's at that point, that we're going to start an outbound leg and it's an outbound leg is reciprocal to that inbound course so instead of the 358 we're going to be flying 178 degrees here now notice that we're not on the 178 radial this is an important point because it's easy to get confused here and think that now that you're on the outbound leg you have to track the 178 radial but notice the 178 radial is over there to the right if we try to track that we're not going to be on this outbound course we'll be on something else so after flying that, we'll start timing one minute out from being a beam, and it's after that one minute that we'll start making another left-hand turn to re-intercept that inbound course. So this is what the hold looks like. Now let's see how do you fly it with the VOR. The first step is going to be to use the VOR to track directly to the station. So let's say our aircraft is positioned somewhat southwest of the VOR. We'll need to turn the OBS until the needle centers and we get a two indication. This will tell us the heading to fly inbound, so it's 050. We'll start tracking inbound, and as we start to approach the VOR, the needle will start to go off to the side, and that two flag will disappear as soon as we overfly. It's at that point that we can make a left turn and start that outbound turn. While we're in that turn, notice the flag flips to from, and we're going to then dial in the inbound course at 358. We'll fly that until we're a beam the station, at which point the flag will flip back to two. This is the point that we know we're a beam the station. We can start that one minute in on our timer. Flying out, and again, not tracking anything, just flying a 178. When that one minute is over, we'll start another left turn. This is the inbound turn. And as we approach that 178 radial, there's that needle coming center. We'll start flying inbound on a 358 heading, keeping the needle centered. And once we get to the station again, the needle goes off to the side, the two flag disappears, and we can start the process all over again. Here it is a couple more times, starting with that outbound turn, set in 358, timing a second outbound, making an inbound turn until we re-intercept, flying inbound until the flag flips, and the process just continues itself. So this is how we'll do this hold. Let's jump in the simulator now and we'll actually fly it. So I'll see you in the virtual skies. All right, here we are in the skies over central Maryland, Carroll County, somewhere about southwest of the Westminster VOR. We want to know what heading is going to take us into the station. So first, I got my 117.9 frequency up there on the Garmin on the top right. Now I want to know what I need to fly to get me inbound to Westminster. So. I'm going to turn the OBS on the VOR receiver in the top right until the needle centers and I get that two indication. So I'm turning here and there it is centered right there. It's about a 050 heading. So I'll tell the autopilot to set in a heading of roughly 050 and that'll start the turn. 
And you might be able to see them in the Garmin too. I've got the DME distance to give me an idea of how far out I am from the station. You're not always going to have that, so it makes it a little bit more challenging. You might need to see how sensitive the needle's getting. Obviously, as you get closer to the station, the needle gets more sensitive, so it gives you a sense of when you're actually approaching. But here we got the DME to help us out a little bit. So really it's just a matter of chasing the needle here as I fly inbound to Westminster, right? The needle is just slightly to the right, so we'll not going crazy with trying to make a correction. A little bit of a right correction, being patient, watching what the needle does and how it responds to it, and just maintaining uh, generally this course into the uh, Westminster VOR. Pretty basic at this point, just tracking inbound, staying on the needle, thinking about the direct entry that we're gonna make. We're going on a 050 heading, so just like we talked about, anticipating that entry. So now that we're starting to get really close to overflying the VOR itself, you can see the, the DME distance starting to drop and the needle might be getting more sensitive, you might be able to tell. Here's a tip that I like to use. Now we're on a 050 heading, but the inbound course is 358. I'd like to be as close to that heading as I can when I cross the station. So what I'm gonna do is just before that two from flag flips, I'm gonna start this turn to 358. Now, while I'm in the turn, see the needle goes haywire and there it is, there's the flip from two to from. We've got station passage, but I'm not being so far off my inbound course heading. It's gonna help me intercept the inbound course later. But here it is, we're now in this first outbound turn. This was the direct entry into the hold and we're gonna keep the turn coming. I've got the autopilot setting in eventually to a 178 degree heading. Now that we're in the turn, we're also going to twist the OBS needle, or I'm sorry, the OBS dial to put in the inbound course. This can slip you up, so be careful here. Even though we're flying an outbound heading, which is 178, I don't want 178 on the OBS. I want the inbound 358 degree heading at all times in this hold. Remember, when we're in the outbound leg, we're not trying to track any kind of guidance, right? The needle isn't supposed to be in the center, so it's okay that we don't have that outbound heading in the OBS. We're just going to fly 178 until we get further outbound. It's time to turn inbound, and then that's when we're going to pick up the needle and actually have some guidance to get back to the station. Staying in the turn here, rolling out on that roughly 178 degree heading, and then what I'm looking for is that to from flag to flip. Right now it says from, but as I roll out, I'm keeping an eye on the, on the arrow there on the VOR indicator. And when it goes from from to two, I know that I'm a beam the station and I can start my one minute outbound count. So just holding the heading and watching that needle, watching the flag, there it is. So over on the clock, see that it was 16 seconds past the uh, minute. So that'll be our indication of when we can start making our left turn to start coming back inbound again. So really, again, there's no guidance. There's no needle that we're tracking on the outbound. This is just, you know, we're, we're, we're in line to go back down the water chute, uh, which is the inbound course. So I'm just waiting, getting myself tracked outbound uh, as best I can hold this 178 degree heading and waiting for the minute to pass, all right? 45 seconds, we're looking for uh, 16 seconds and that's when we'll start that left turn back to track inbound. So about five more seconds and we'll start that turn and here it is. I'll have the autopilot give me a nice left turn all the way around to 358 degrees. Now in a perfect world what's going to happen when I roll out on this 358 degree heading is that needle will have swung from full right deflection all the way into the center. And then basically it'll just be a task of keeping the needle in the middle as I fly inbound for the for the roughly two miles until I get over the station. Now it never really works out perfectly. This is a no wind scenario here in the simulator, but you can imagine how much harder it's going to be when there's wind up there. And even in the simulator, you'll see in a sec that it's not going to be a perfect tracking inbound, especially on this first time with the entry. So here we are, and you can already maybe see that I've got about another 60 degrees to turn, and it looks like that needle is going to overshoot, right? We're going to shoot through the center. What that means is that it's not going to help me to fly 358 degrees. I'll never intercept. So I'm going to go a little bit past 358. I'll have the autopilot fly me something, you know, again, nothing crazy, maybe 340, 345. Remember how close we are to the station. So the needle is going to be so, so sensitive. There's really not a need to make big, big, big corrections. So here we are a little bit to the left of 
that 358 heading, just watching to see that needle should start coming back in the center. And when I see it starting to move, again, it's moving really fast. I want to anticipate it and start turning myself back to my 358 degree heading. Again, not looking for perfection. It doesn't need to be dead right in the center. I just need to be close enough and I need to be able to tell when I roughly am overflying the Westminster VOR. So I'm looking again at that to from indicator. And when it goes from to, as we're flying to the station now and flips to from, I know I can start my next outbound turn. So the best way to be here is that when you really, really get close to the station, trying to fly as close to the inbound course at 358 as you can. You'd like to be as close to that as you can be when the flag flips. So just kind of tracking here, there goes the needle all the way off, full deflection, and there's the flag flip. So we can start our next turn, the outbound turn. Again, in a perfect world, this is gonna take one minute because we're at a standard rate. Um, so each one of these legs, the outbound turn, the inbound turn, the outbound leg and inbound leg should all kind of total up to four minutes total in a standard hold. Does it work out that way uh, in reality? Not, not always, but we're trying to get as close as we can. So this is the um, first full hold, right? We already did the entry, but this is the first time that we're actually doing the full racetrack. So we should have a little bit of a better time tracking the needle when we do make that inbound turn finally. So this is just our 180 degree turnaround, looking to come out on that outbound course of 178 degrees. Again, the needle is not gonna be in the center. We're not trying to track any guidance. We're not on a radial from the EMI VOR station. Right? We're on a, a, a line that's parallel to the 178 radial, but it's not on any radial. So we're not using any kind of VOR guidance for the outbound. That's why we don't twist the OBS at all. So rolling out on the heading, the flag flipped from from to two right there, so we start the time about 40 seconds after the minute, and just maintaining that 178 degree outbound heading. Here comes the minute, and we'll have the autopilot turn us back inbound, about a 358 heading. Now, this time we would expect to have a little bit of a better job tracking that inbound course, right? Because we started on the 358 degree inbound course when we made the turn before, rather than when we did that direct entry, we we're on that like 050 heading. It was a little bit more difficult to really nail the needle. This time I'd expect in a perfect world to have that needle be a little bit easier to track here as we come inbound. But we'll have a look. You know, and again, you can anticipate how quickly or slowly the needle's gonna come in and adjust your rate of turn accordingly, right? So here it's starting to come in, meaning that we're less than 10 degrees away from the radial. We still got another, you know, 45 degrees of turn to go before we get to our 358 heading. This actually looks like it's gonna be okay. So we won't make any adjustments, we won't underturn or overturn or anything roll out on our 358 heading and then see what kind of small little micro adjustments we maybe have to make. So there it is, needles right in the center. We got a few miles to fly and we'll just make some small corrections here just to keep tracking the needle. Again, not going crazy. Remember how close we are to the station and how sensitive the needle is. So really nothing more than like a five degree at the most correction. And just being patient watching the needle if it does move one or two dots off to the left or to the right, it's not the end of the world because we're just really interested in when we cross over the station and it's time to start the next turn outbound. So that's what we're looking for, just the to from flag. We're watching that and then we're watching the sensitivity of the needle, right? You get into that zone of confusion. That's when you know it's coming and you can kind of see it starting to fall off the table there, the needle. We're not chasing it because we know how close we are. We're just gonna let it go full deflection to the right, and then when that flag flips, that's when we'll start the left turn outbound. There's the needle all the way off to the right, and the flag flips, so it's time to turn back outbound. So that's it, that's a, it's a four step process once you're actually in the racetrack pattern. It's a flying inbound on the needle, waiting for a flip, flying outbound, waiting for a flip, starting the minute, turning inbound, 
tracking the needle, and then uh, et cetera, et cetera, until air traffic control tells you to do something different or your examiner tells you to do something different.